Hey, welcome to Slow Unpacking. How do you survive a volcano? What if you were gliding over a river and a fish is trying to eat you? Today, we will find out. I liked how the previous pack turned out. So let's do it again. We open the cards first and then curate how the story will be the most interesting for us all. So let's look at these cards. The first one is Utility Knife. The second one is Tide Peak Ambusher by Kakai Kotaki. Broken Wings by Ekaterina Burmak. We have Mind Rain by Gregorz Rutowski. We have Resolute Strike by Cezao Sen. We have Chilling Trap by Johan Bodin. Then we have Pyroclastic Hellion by Simon Dominic. Then we have Turn Timber Ascetic by Nicholas Gregory. McKinney Ox by Ilse Gort. We have Glacial Grasp by Thomas Cetrusek. And we're gonna set this straight. Then we have Allied Assault by Josh Haas. Throw the Grave, which looks amazing, by Wiley Becker. Then we have Low Mages Familiar, which is made by Gabor Sixai. River Glide Pathway by Kieran Jenner. We see an island for a moment, but then we go back to the other side of Lava Glide Pathway by the same artist. The island was uh, created by Anna Steinbauer. And then last but not least, the copy token by Jason Rainville. I know that this was fast, but we are going to dive deep. The whole video is still about only one pack. This beautiful pack has some cute creatures and some less cute creatures. Last week we got a really strong card, got my eye. Now I am honestly looking at utility knife, a small piece of equipment that must come handy in this world. Still it looks so different from a utility knife in our world. This one has hooks to climb with and grinders for some reason and actually all sides are just knives, which gives a grand sense of adventure and makes me wonder, how does someone survive a journey through Zendikar? Utility Knife is the perfect starting point for our journey, because great preparation sets you up so well. In every facet of life, take your time to prepare for more tumultuous times, because when they arrive, you will not have as much time to think. This particular knife is rather battered, we can see how it has been used a lot. The card tells us that you buy this before battle, so that when you need it, you can play and equip it for only one mana when you need it. I also love that the flavor tells us that this knife is being traded. Sandikar has many safe zones, with dangerous zones in between, of course. In these safe zones, adventurers take their time with stocking up for their next mission. This adventurer probably told the salesmen they were going on a rather complicated climbing mission. When we look at the art again, we also see other things. A row, a small bag that which you can still easily move around, and a classical potion vial, which is amazing to see. You drink this and you will definitely get 20 health points back. While preparation is amazing, tools are not everything on Zendikar. Because for every utility a knife has, there is a danger on Sendikar that is naturally equipped to deal with it. Look at this goblin that thought flying was the pinnacle of evolution. He honestly just bumps into a large ruin. Well, if you are going to get tools, you are better off also learning how to use them. The flavor tells us getting airborne with a kite sail is easy. It's everything afterwards that takes focus, skill and luck. In my experience, Goblins have neither of those. Later on we will still get to see how to actually use wings and how goblins can survive too. They are not all that helpless when they just stay in their niche. Although goblins are pioneers of course. You might wonder why a goblin would fly at all. 
Well, for one, we cannot really logically think of what the reasons for goblins to do anything are. But if I were to guess, it was because there are shinies in the sky. Zendikar's ruins are floating masterpieces of ancient magic, of which we still do not know a lot of. After the Eldrazi Wars, many of these ruins have started to shift. Zendikar always was a world in shambles, and now it has been hit twice. Still, there are many powers hidden beneath, which is why adventurers still try to brave this world's biomes. One of these biomes is Sajiri, which is made only out of ice. Not many creatures can survive here, but there are powerful sphinxes and apparently only other cat-like animals that survive here. These creatures set up traps and feast upon the brave adventurers that think the cold cannot stop them. Actually, these cards show us to learn from our mistakes. Glacial Grasp shows us just not to go here. The cold will be too much and it will slow you down and eventually grasp you down forever. It might never let you go. So draw a card and leave. Chilling Trap says the same. Watch where you walk and don't go too fast. Never run ahead, because there are traps everywhere. From sphinxes to the gold lands themselves. In real life you might do this too. Just be careful with every step. The dilemma is that you will slow yourself down. And you cannot always be so slow. Sendikar has regions like Akum, where the land seems to live. Sometimes the land is not land, like with Pyroclastic Helion, which has the word Hell in its name. This Helion is a crawling volcano according to its flavor text. The difference between a Helion and a volcano is that volcanoes don't get hungry. Honestly, when looking at survival skills, I would say just stay away from the lands altogether. The goblin from before might have been onto something. This Helion has a huge mouth and in it we can see that his saliva is lava. Salava. Its head is also curving upwards, so this thing is either has great core strength or it is going really fast through this stony landscape. Its mechanic suggests the latter and when this is hungry, you better have a goblin with you to distract this thing. Okay, so flying it is then. It is very hard to fly on a kite for very long distances, but on Zendikar it might actually be possible. Riverglide Pathway features Amandi, Kaizo expert, and she is here for a quick lesson. She tells us that the wind knows the way, so just let it carry you to your destination. Well, she also tells us that when you wait just a minute, a living tempest might come to eat you. But just let it guide you. So, follow the wind for horizontal speed and use the lava for vertical economy. Do not fear the heat, just let it lift you up. In this little nugget actually lies a great lesson for survival and actually thriving in life. On Zendikar there are so many dangers, so many forces of nature that it is impossible to tame them yet. But when you make your guide and just let these forces propel you forward or in this case upward, you might actually have a chance. So, learn to use your environment, however dangerous it might seem. Never be afraid of enemies or huge tasks or projects that lie before you, because you can use them to your advantage. That is actually the human advantage. We have learned to shape and use the forces of nature. Of course, this might take a while on Zendikar. Okay, but let's be honest, Amandi could fly around on a kite, but the goblin could not. There has to be something else. How else can we prepare ourselves? Well, the next ingredient for success, as we have seen, is actually learning how to use your tools. Resolute Strike says, if you practice something often enough, it becomes part of you. That's why we train, and that's why we survive, by Tasha Greypelt, veteran. Greypelt is a small village of druids in Turntimber. 
a place in Andu where you could find rampaging balos and great forests, showing us that sometimes a sword might come in handy on this world, when you know how to use it, so that you could smash through a rock or a skull. In order to actually survive, you need to practice so much that what you use becomes an extension of yourself. In my example, I could have this keyboard to write with, or I could know how to write an unpacking video. These are two totally different levels and it is why we survive. Okay, I hear you thinking, how would a goblin survive then? Well, actually these can survive on Undo too. They just had to practice like the previous druid warrior. Goblins are known to learn the lands inside and out because they practice with jumping on people so much. Its flavor says, Goblins from the Makandi trenches of Andu make surprisingly skilled climbing guides due to their habit of scaling the cliffs to drop onto unsuspecting foes. Good luck with trying to recruit this one for your expedition. You will first have to let it ambush you with this big, toothy pickaxe on a rope. The Teethering Peaks are a place where rocks from weirdly steep formations. It is apparently very hard to climb them. But when you walk through the canyons, you have these annoying goblins jumping you from all sides. So you better have one as a guide, as they do seem to become one with their environments. So a great answer for survival would be to learn to become one with your tools and one with your environment. Or you could have a great team with at least one goblin guide, of course. A light assault shows us a vampire and a core working together. These are natural enemies and have been at war for a long time. Still, they have had a moment of working together when the Eldrazi attacked. So, apparently now they still to sometimes tolerate each other in order to defeat some other creatures. They apparently also form parties together, as we see here. I do ship these intercultural relations. It's cute to have these enemies become friends. For now they can say they adventure together because they appreciate each other's skill. Later they could slowly become actual friends. Thwart the Grave is a great card that lets you return at most two cards, or half a party when you look at it. Showing us once again the importance of teamwork, because when you fall, the hands of your friends could pick you up. Actually, looking at this is amazing. There are so many elements, the blackened out person falling showing us someone that feels lost, then there is the peaks around them showing us the dangers of the lands here, then there is the red ribbon which stands for continuity and in this case it stands for your lifeline and then the hands showing us that your friends can be your lifeline. More on the art later. But know that your friends can pick you up, so making friends and allies is a great strategy. One of these friends is the familiar. Familiars are creatures that mages keep with them to make up for their weaknesses. Usually, this is a creature that can tank a little bit or that the mage could enhance. This case is not much different. A lol mage is a mage that knows how to silence and control the royal. The royal is a defense mechanism for Sendikar. Its purpose was to clean out the Eldrazi corruption. And before that, it helped stop people from building civilizations. Lol mages have to be able to make huge spells. So, this familiar helps soak up the energy that was wasted from using such a big spell. It must be hard to use exactly the right mana. So when you use too much, this lizard gives some of it back by farting it out. Which is also why it is happy to be with you. The proof of fart magic is the flavor, if you did not believe me, which says they store energy in special gastric organs. But I guess you would probably rather have me clear the path than ramble about guts. One group of people that have been able to fit in with the lands because of magic are the vampires of Zendikar, which we have seen fight together with the core before in this pack. Mind Drain shows us one that has just eaten the mind of another person and that is now not very mindful anymore. The art depicts Drana, who is the last 
blood chief and therefore the last vampire that can turn more vampires. She is trying to rebuild her society and her main goal is to create more blood chiefs again. Which might only be possible with some Eldrazi help, but perhaps she finds another way. In any way, having a further goal is a sign that one is driving or mad, in this case both. If you are for some reason a planeswalker that comes to Zendikar, like Chase, who was just there to help his friend, then you might want to use your magic too. In this case, a literal expansion of Jace's self. I wonder, what would you make a copy of if that thing or being could be an extension of yourself? Would you just make another you? Or would you prefer something like a Halion? Our last section of survival methods is becoming one with nature. We have seen others do it in this pack before by just knowing the lands. But you could also just be on their side. Turn Timber is a massive forest and the giant ascetic could fit right in. This flavor says, for so long this land cried out in pain. Now as the flow returns to its balance point a new harmony echoes in the trees. This giant is empathetic with the lands and he is trimming the forest by pulling out dead trees to make room for live ones. This is the largest forest tender you will ever get to see. And then, here is the pinnacle of survival. Being so stubborn that no one gets to really kill you. Even Bruce Tarl acknowledges that this beast might only go down by massive hordes of blood flies. This ox is so stubborn that nothing could get in its way. I mean, look at how it is standing over us, on that peak. I would not disturb this one's rest, especially as it would not bother us otherwise. So perhaps the answer is, don't play with danger, but when danger knocks, knock back. As promised, let's look at Thwart the Grave some more. I love the symbolistic approaches that we have gotten more and more of. It shows us what is really important on a plane or in a story. This one shows us that having friends and lifelines is the most important. It also shows us that the whole world is about danger and when you fall, you need to have something picking you up. Someone that is reaching out while they're falling is just a sign of trust and we can see how the red lifeline is being grabbed by the grasping hands of their friends. The hands are intertwined in order to show us unity and there are many to show us how such a short moment can repeat itself infinitely over the span of the shortest second. But the deepest breath, the breath with which you try to take in the most life. Now let's look at the whole pack again and choose a draft pick. This pack is a very obvious choice in my eyes. There are some really specific enabler cards with Lolmage Familiar and Pagidney Ox. The removal is temporary, or only for flyers, which are not as oppressive in the set. And Pyroclastic Helion is an enabler, the E of breath in my eyes, but does not have massive upside and forces you into green, red or white green, of which green is very open. But what is more open than anything? Black and toward the grave party synergies could win you the game when you build around it and can enable you to stay open in your colors. As a first pick, it's great, even though there are obvious stronger cards in this pack. Zendikar teaches us a lot about survival, but I think it is fitting to end off with this draft pick, because survival is not really possible without friends or nice people in general. Thanks for watching.